How's everybody doing? Man, it is so good to be here. It's been a long time since I've been here. The last time I was here, I had black hair and Dr. Aiken had hair. <laughs> Let's just show you how long that's been, how long that's been. To Dr. Aiken, my friend and brother from another mother, the president of Southeastern Seminary, to his beautiful wife, Charlotte, who have been dear friends uh, uh, through the years, to all the professors, the staff, the students, uh, who are similar to the Cassie Foundation Board. Incredible work. Thank you all for all you all doing for uh, theological education uh, in this area. That just, God has truly, truly blessed you all. Thank you all for being such a friend uh, to Southeastern Seminary. I'm delighted and excited because I have been invited to be back here with you at Southeastern seminary. It is an absolute joy and an absolute privilege. Uh, Dean Missy Branch, just wave at me. Wave at me, Dean Missy Branch. And as you said, somewhere, uh, uh, her and uh, Deuce are dear friends and my brother, uh, my son Chip, when they were in Dallas. And I, Dean, uh, Missy and I have served on uh, several Zoom calls together. And I said, I'm going to be there at Southeastern. So it's good to, uh, to finally be here and thank God for this privilege. Dr. Aiken, Southeastern, let me also thank you for sending Dr. Jamie Dew, Tara Dew, and the Dew crew down to New Orleans, Louisiana, and NOBTS. They have been phenomenal. Uh, y'all loss is our gain. They have, uh, we, we love them. We appreciate all that Dr. Dew and uh, Tara has done and uh, the Dew crew. And uh, we thank God for them and thank God for the gift that God has given to them through. Uh, Dr. Shad, it's good to see you. But a friend who was down there at New Orleans Seminary before he moved up to better things here at Southeastern, man, he and I are dear friends. And thank you for being here. My host, Nick. Nick, now, thank you, Nick, for all that you've done and appreciate everything that God has done in your life. Southeastern, I believe in victorious living. I believe that God didn't just save us to give us fire insurance from hell. I believe God saved us to be lights in a dark world. That she is. Hey, Missy. Hey, <laughs> lights in a dark world. I thought you were skipping chapel this morning. I said, all the days that we here, God, let's give it, uh, 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 now you messed up my statement. Uh, uh, <laughs> lights in the dark world and salt the low salt of salt in society. I believe that God has given to every born again believer, to every Christian, all that we need to be victorious over the enemy in our lives, over any attack of the enemy that may come your way, I believe without a doubt from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet that God Deuce has given us whatever we need to be victorious in our walk with God. I want to talk about that this morning from a very familiar passage of Scripture. Look at with me the book in, first, uh, in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And verse 13, again, Dr. Aiken, thank you for this wonderful privilege and opportunity. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. If you have it, please say amen. Matter of fact, y'all can say amen all throughout my sermon. I'm kind of used to it. If y'all know what I'm talking about, all right? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. You'll find these similar words. No temptation has overtaken you except as common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but with the temptation will also make a way to escape that you might be able to bear it. Our Father and our God, Master, we thank you and praise you for this wonderful and exciting honor and privilege to be back here at Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary. Thank you for my friend and brother, Dr. Aiken, God, his wife, Charlotte. Thank you for the faculty and the staff and all the students here at Southeastern. Thank you, Lord, for the Cassie Foundation and the board here and all that they have done for this school and other uh, schools across this uh, uh, nation, God. Thank you for their generous heart and giving. Now, God, I thank you for the opportunity to stand in this pulpit, but there's been no lack of preaching. So, God, I pray that you would do every time I stand to preach, God. Hide me behind the cross. Father, let them not see Fred, but God, let them see Christ. So then, God, that you may be glorified, the saints of God may be edified, Satan may be horrified, and lost sinners will come to repent. The devil, God, stand in my body, think with my mind, speak with my voice. And I'll be so very careful to give your name all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. And for us, let people God say amen. There has no temptation taken you, such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptation 
also make a way to escape so that you and that you and that you might be able to bear. With that text in mind, with that scripture in mind, uh, with this uh, chapel service in mind, I, I want to preach this morning from the subject, how to win more than you lose. How to win more than you lose. Southeast and I am convinced that every Christian can live a victorious life. I think and I'm convinced that every born-again believer can live a victorious life. Uh, 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 Deuce and Missy, I'm convinced that every saved person can live a victorious life. In other words, Dr. Shaddock, I'm convinced that if you truly are a Christian, that if you truly are a believer, that if you truly are born again, that if you truly are saved, then I am convinced, I am persuaded, I am of the belief that as a Christian, as a child of God, that you can win students, uh, faculty, you can win more than you lose as it relates to your Christian life. As it relates to your walk with God, as it relates to letting your light shine in this dark and dingy world that we live in. Uh, uh, brothers and sisters, I'm amazed that so many of us believe the lies of the enemy. I'm amazed that so many of us believe the falsehoods of the enemy. I'm amazed that so many of us believe the untruths of the enemy. I'm away, amazed that so many of us believe the deceitfulness of the enemy when it comes, Dr. Aiken, to our Christianity, when it comes to our walk with God, when it comes to letting our light shine in this dark and dingy world that you and I live in. Therefore, many of us uh, uh, believe, because many of us believe uh, the devil's lie, we continue to mess up. Because many of us believe the devil's lie, we continue to fall. Because many of us believe the devil's lie, we continue to stumble, we continue to screw up, we continue to lose more than we win. Even though we know what the Word of God says. Even though we know what the scriptures say, listen, I don't care what Satan says, I don't care what the devil says, the word of God says, I can do all things through Christ that give me the strength. I don't care what the devil says, the word of God says, greater is he that's in you and you and me than he that's in the world. I don't care what the devil says, the word of God says, Dr. Ty, I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ that loves me. I don't care what the devil says, the word of God says, if God is for us, who in the world can be against us? I don't care what the devil says, the word of God said, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I don't care what Satan says, Nick. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things now become new students. I don't care what the devil said. The word of God said, there is no temptation taking you such as common to man, but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptation, you will escape from it, that you will be victorious in your walk with God. My brothers and sisters, the question of the hour is, whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? The Satan's lies or God's words? I can't speak for anybody in here. Can't speak for anyone in here, but I choose to believe the word of God. Six Kissing Foundation, I choose to believe when it comes to my walk with God and my uh, a commitment of living to it, like Dr. Shaddock, I choose to believe uh, the Word of God. And because I think and I choose to believe the Word of God, I believe that when it comes to our Christianity, Nick, when it comes to our walk with God, when it comes to letting our light shine in this dark and dingy world, I believe from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet that I can win more than I lose. Can I get about 100 believers to say amen to that? But in order to win more than you lose, you must have a genuine, authentic, personal relationship with Jehovah God. Miss, in order to pull us off, in order to, for us to win more than we lose, you must have a genuine, authentic, personal relationship with Jehovah God. Not just know about God, not just know of God, but the question of the hour is, do you know that you know that you know God for yourself? Not if your mama know him or your daddy know him or your sister. I'm asking that in order to have a personal, uh, uh, to win more than you lose, you must have a personal, intimate relationship with God. You must know the God who saved you. You must know the God who sanctified you. You must know the God who changed you. Do you know him like that? You must know the God who redeemed you. You must know the God who anointed you. You must know the God that forgave you. Do you know him like that? You must know the God that filled you. You must know the God that sealed you. You must know the God that washed you. Do you know him southeastern like that? You must know the God that justified you. You must know the God that empowers you. But most of all, you must know the God that can keep you. You must know the God can, can keep you in the day and time that we're living in. And if you know him like that, 
I am convinced, South Eastern Dad, when it comes to our Christianity, when it comes to our walk with God, students, when it comes to letting our light shine in this dark and dingy world we live in, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, staff and faculty, I am convinced that we can win uh, more than we lose. And that's the point that the Apostle Paul, that thinking is making here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Paul is trying to convince the believers in the church at Corinth that they can win more than they lose. He's trying to convince these individuals in the body of Christ that, listen, y'all can win more than you lose. And like man of my brothers and my sisters, I think that my number one priority in this sermon, in this chapel, my number one purpose in today's sermon, my number one goal in today's sermon is to convince all of you sitting in this sanctuary, my number one priority in today's sermon, my number one purpose, my number one goal is to convince all of you who are watching by way of internet that your Christian life does not have to be like a yo-yo up and down, up and down, up and down. My number one priority is to convince every one of you that your Christian life does not have to be like a roller coaster ride. Highs and lows, highs and lows, highs and lows. My number one priority in this chapel today, my uh, number one purpose today, my number one goal today is to convince every last one of us in here, from the pulpit to the door, from the balcony to the floor, is to convince all of us that you can win win more than you lose. Deuce, that sounds like a rap song, bro. Amen. Amen. You can win more than you lose. So how do we do it? Southeastern, how do we pull it off? How do we do what some folk have said, even Christians have said that this cannot happen? How can you and I win more than we lose? Well, our text gives us our answer. Y'all ask some good questions here. I like coming here at Southeast. I miss, miss y'all. How can we do it? How can we win more than it? Well, there are three things Paul said that must happen in your life and my life. Like Chad, if we're going to win more than we lose. First of all, he says, if you're going to win more than you lose, number one, you must have discernment. If you're going to win more than you lose, you must have discernment. Look at the first part of verse 13. Paul said, the scripture said, the word of God said, no temptation has overtaken you such as common to man. You must have discernment means to recognize clearly. To have discernment means to recognize clearly that there is nothing you and I can do about being tempted. To have discernment means to recognize clearly that temptation will happen to every last one of us. The Bible said, the scripture said, that temptation, Casey Foundation, is, is, uh, is common to everyone. None of us are exempt. Think about it. Adam and Eve were tempted. Cain and Abel were tempted. Moses and Aaron were tempted. It's common to every last one of us. Abraham and Sarah were tempted. Noah was tempted. David was tempted. It's common to every last one of us. Daniel was tempted. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was tempted. It's common. Solomon, the wisest man in the world, was tempted. Samson was tempted. Elijah and Elijah was tempted. It's common to every last one of us. Jacob and Esau was tempted. Ruth and Esther were tempted. Joshua and Jeremiah was tempted. Mary and Joseph were tempted. Listen, don't mean to offend anybody. That's not my style. Though God knows that's not my person. But I want to let you know that your mama was tempted. My mama was tempted. Your daddy was tempted. My daddy was tempted. All I'm trying to say, temptation is common to every last one of us. And just to show you how bold and brazen Dr. Shattuck the devil is, even Jesus Christ was tempted. In Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4, all I'm saying, Dr. Dagan, that temptation is common to every last one of us. There's not a man in this chapel. There's not a woman in this chapel. There's not a staff member in this chapel. There's not a faculty. There's not a person in this chapel that gets a pass. None of us gets a pass. None of us are off limits when it comes to being tempted. Satan's job is to tempt us, and many of us can testify that homeboy is very good at what he does. However, Southeastern, I'm convinced that you can have the victory if there is discernment in your life. When it comes to dealing with temptation, again, discernment means to recognize clearly. Discernment is to recognize clearly. In other words, uh, if you're going to win more than you lose, you need to be able to discern uh, between looking and lusting. If you're going to win more than you lose, you need to discern between what's right and what's wrong. 
If you're going to uh, win more, then you need to discern between what's flattery and what's flirting. If you're going to win more, then you must discern between what's appropriate and what's inappropriate. There is a difference. If you're going to win more, then you, know, you need to discern between what's a holy hug and what's a horny hug. Now, let me explain that one. In African-American church where I passed out, we do a lot of hugging. Uh, particularly since before the pandemic. We're not doing much now. Pandemic is still here, but before the pandemic, we did a lot of it. And man, we hugged folk before service. We hugged folk during the service. We had fellas there. And, we hugged, and I went to hug this, uh, this member this year one, one day missing, and she hugged me, and she said, mm. I said, Excuse me? Like, she, had, she hugged me, and she said, mm. I said, The devil is a liar. The devil, ever since then, this is all she get. This is it. That, that wasn't a holy hug. That was a horny hug. Amen. She was up to something. Uh, you need to discern between what's a holy hug. Uh, I know it don't happen at y'all church, but it happened at my, if, uh, in a horny hug. You need to discern between what's a compliment and what's criticism. You need to discern between what's honesty and what's hypocrisy. You need to discern between who's a friend and who's a foe because there is a, a difference. Brothers and sisters, if you're going to win more than you lose, we must have discernment. Discernment about the people that you hang with. Discernment about the places that you go. Discernment about what you put on Facebook, about what you put on Instagram, about what you put on Twitter, about what you put on. You cannot put everything on Facebook. You cannot put everything on Instagram and Twitter and the internet. If you want to win more than you lose, ladies and gentlemen, the fact of the matter is you must have discernment in your life. But then that's the second thing that Paul tells us Southeastern in this text. Not only if you're going to win more than you lose, you must have discernment, but secondly, he says, you must have devotion. He said, well, you must have devotion. Look at the second part of verse 13. No temptation is overtaking you, such as common to man he did, but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but God is faithful will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. You must have devotion. In other words, uh, you must have a growing personal relationship with God. Let me say that again. If you're going to win, brothers, more than this, you're going to win, you must have a growing personal relationship with God. Why is that, someone may ask? Well, because the Bible says God is faithful to those believers who are devoted to him. The scripture says God is faithful to those believers who are devoted to him. God is committed to those believers who are committed to him. And because of your faithfulness to God, because of your devotion to God, because of your commitment to God, God will not, God will not, God will not allow the enemy to tempt you beyond what you're able to stand. Can I say that one more time, Dr. Dakin? Because of your devotion to God and your commitment to God uh, and because of your faithfulness to God the Bible said God will not allow the enemy to tempt you beyond what you're able to stand that's why the text said but God is faithful that's why every baptized believer who is devoted to God that's why every born again Christian who is devoted to God needs to know that you know that you know that you know that when it comes uh, to spiritual warfare in your life in my life when it comes to spiritual warfare in your marriage when it comes to spiritual warfare in your family, when it comes to spiritual warfare in your ministry, when it comes to spiritual warfare on your job, when it comes to spiritual warfare in your school, you need to understand that the battle you are fighting is not yours, the battle you are fighting does not belong to you, but because of your devotion to God, the battle is the Lord's, the battle is the Lord, but God is faithful. In other words, just like Job, the devil has to come through God to get to you, to you, and to me. Oh, my brothers and sisters, let me explain. When you think about all the stuff that could have happened to you and to me, when you think about all the stuff that should have happened to you and to me, when you think about all the stuff that would have happened to you and me, but God was faithful. That time you were tempted to commit adultery, but God. That time you were tempted to commit fornication, but God. That time you were tempted to get involved in homosexuality, but 
God, that time you were tempted to commit suicide, but God, that time you were tempted to join a gang, but God, that time when the lights were about to be cut off in your apartment, but God, that time you didn't have enough money to pay your rent, but God, that time your car almost was repossessed, but God, that time the doctor's report was not in your favor, but God, the lies that could have destroyed you, the sickness that could have killed you, the altercations that could have wiped you out, the arguments that could have wore you out, the confusion that could have pulled your world apart. But God, but God, but God, but God was faithful in each and every situation. Think about it. You had enemies you didn't even know about. Folk were talking about you. You didn't even hear. Dangers were swirling all around you. You couldn't even see. Oh, but in the midst of it all, God was there. There were obstacles you couldn't overcome. There were disasters you couldn't discern. But God was faithful and saved you from them all because of your devotion devotion to God, because of your relationship to God, because of your spiritual growth in God. God led us in every way. God kept us every day. God kept our feet from slipping and our lives from falling. And it's all because God was faithful to you because you were faithful to God. But God, but God, but God. Can I get about a hundred amens right there? How can we do this? How can we do what some people say can't be done? How can you and I as sons and daughters of God win more than we lose? Well, number one, you must have discernment. You must be able to discern the fact that the enemy is going to come after you. He doesn't care if you're president of a seminary. He don't care if you're rewarding uh, 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 millions of dollars to seminary training. He don't care if your position or uh, uh, status in life. You need to discern that the enemy will come after you. Number two, you must have devotion. You must have a growing, intimate relationship with God. And then finally, if you're going to win more than you lose, you must have discernment. You must have devotion. And then finally, you must have discipline. You must have discipline. Look at the last part of verse 13. But, as that sanctified conjunction, but with the temptation, but with the temptation, will also make the way to escape that you you and you and you might be able to bear it. That word discipline means self-control. That word discipline means self-restraint. If discipline is going to happen in your life and my life, discipline must be preceded by discernment and devotion. Because discipline without discernment and discipline without devotion could lead to disaster in your life and my life. And that's the problem with many of us. We're disciplined when it comes to some things, but not disciplined when it comes to other things. We're disciplined when it comes to Sunday worship. Won't miss it. But no devotion to Sunday school with our small groups. We're disciplined when it comes to praise team and choir rehearsal, music ministry, but no devotion to Bible study. We're disciplined when it comes to giving an offering, but no devotion to tithing. With discipline to come to our social clubs and, and fraternities and sororities, our, our gym membership uh, and, and our golf days, but no devotion to the ministries in our local church. Ladies and gentlemen, we're disciplined when it comes to hunting and fishing and golfing our sports team. We do not have the same devotion to the things of God. My brother, my sister, I've come all the way from New Orleans, Louisiana to warn you, be careful. Brothers, be careful. Sisters, be careful. Be careful. If you're not careful, your lack of discipline could lead to disaster in your life. If you're not careful, your lack of discipline could lead to bother. That's why the text says, that's why the Bible says, but with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you and you might be able to bear it. Listen, this is God's promise to every believer in this chapel. This is God's promise to every believer watching by way of internet. God wants you to know that you can win more than you lose. This is God's promise to every Christian who wants to win more than you lose. And his promise is in the midst of your temptation, in the midst of your struggles, in the midst of the opportunities that the enemy brings your way, in the midst of your conflict, in the midst of the enemy's attack, in the midst of the holy hugs and horny hugs that you may receive at church. God says, I will make a way for you to escape. I will make a way for you to escape. That's a promise from God. However, 
you must discipline yourself to look for the way out. That's the problem with many of us, I've discovered. Growing up in the body of Christ, pastoring a church, hanging around with folk, I've discovered that many of us won't take the way out, even though God promised us that he'll do it. Let me just give you an example. Think about the, just think, don't raise your hand, but just think about the last time you messed up. Come on, don't, shouldn't be long, shouldn't be long. Just think about the last time you messed up. The question I need to ask you, did God give you a way out? Think about the situation. Think about the time you gave into the tactics of the enemy. The question I want to ask you, did God give you a way out? And I promise you, I assure you, the answer is always yes. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, Southeastern, it's a proven fact. It's a biblical fact that God will keep you however you must want to be kept. In order to be kept, there must be discernment in your life. There must be devotion in your life. There must be discipline in your life. Can't do it by yourself. I don't care what degree you have. I don't care what position you have. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how long you've been in church. You can't do this by yourself. Can't do it on your own. You are in a spiritual warfare every day of your life. You're in a spiritual battle every day of your life. However, I am convinced it's a battle we can win. It's a warfare we can win because it's not about you. It's not about me. It's all about the God in you and the God in me. Can't speak for nobody else in there. Can't speak for my friend Dr. Aiken. I speak for, can't speak for Dr. Shadda. Can't speak for Deuce or, or for Missy. Can't speak for Nick. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I want to win more than I lose. Then I'm at the point in my walk with God. I want to win more than I lose. I want to win for this woman that I'm mad in love with, Elizabeth, the love of my life, the apple of my eye, my prime rear, my good thing. I tell people all over America, ain't no woman like the one I got. Amen, amen, amen. Boy, did two years next month we'll be married. I want to win for Elizabeth. She's invested in me. She believed in me. She's been praying for me for all of these years. I don't want to mess up now. I want to win for my wife, Elizabeth. I want to win for my son, Chip, and my, who knows, the, who knows the Deuce and Missy. I want to win for my daughter, Kimberly, who's been watching me since they were born and watching my lifestyle, watching my commitment to God. I don't want to mess up now. I want to win for my three precious grandbabies, Drew and Zoe and Gabrielle, who are looking up to their papa and think that I can just move the world for them. I want to win for the congregation called Franklin Avenue Baptist Church in New Orleans that have allowed me to be their pastor for 36, the only church I've ever pastored, 36 years. The only church I've ever pastored. They trust in me. They believe in me. And I don't want to let them down. I want to win for Franklin. But not only do I want to win for Elizabeth. Not only do I want to win for Chip and Kimberly. Not only do I want to win for my grandkids. Not only do I want to win for my church. Then I want to win because of the one who saved me. The one who redeemed me. The one who shed his blood on the cross for my sins. The one who raised me as a, a street punk from the Lord night ward. Filled me with his spirit. Called me into the ministry. And allowed me to accomplish things that I never thought. I want to win for the one who hung on Calvary's cross for the sins of mankind. I am determined to win more than I lose. I have a made up mind. That I will win more than I lose. What about you brothers? What about you sisters? What about you married couples? What about you singles? What about you seminary staff? What about you seminary students? Anybody here beside me want to win more than they lose? Anybody with a made up mind that you want to win more than you lose? Well then, let's be committed. Let's be intentional. Let's be resolute. Let's have confidence. Let's be bold. Let's have a made up mind that from this day forward, we will win more than we lose. And we can win more than we lose when we have discernment, when we have devotion, when we have discipline. Yes, there is no temptation taking you, such as common to man. But God is faithful, he will not allow you to be tempted. Beyond which you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape so that you and that you and that you might be able to bear it. That sounds like winning to me. That sounds like victory to me. And that's why we can shout with confidence. Victory is mine. 
Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told the devil just the other day, get, get, get behind me because victory today is mine. Yes, we can win more than we lose. Father, thank you and praise you for this wonderful privilege and opportunity that you've given me to stand in this pulpit at Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary. Thank you for the trust and confidence that Dr. Aiken has given to me to invite me to preach at chapel. Thank you for all who are here today, all who are watching by way of internet. And I pray, God, that your word will not return void, but accomplish those things you wanted to accomplish in the lives of your sons and daughters. Help us, God, to be lights in a dark world and salt in a little sodium, saltless society. And we'll be careful to give your name all praise, all glory, and all honor. For all that you've done, what you're doing right now, that you promise you will continue to do. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless y'all. Thank y'all for letting me be here. I love y'all. Pray for me. I'll pray for you.